I just got a boner. I just got a boner. But I'm not gonna talk about that. He's got balls big enough to be best, bro. I'm fabulous! Pisses me off, too. Von Stroheim! Uh, Vonheim? She wants your dick. I recommend it. Perfect. My hand on the squirrel. Your argument is invalid. Dango, dango, daikazoku. Dan out of Dan. AKA Space. We're live when I choose that we're live. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. Um, I am CJ, your host. Here with me today is our usual cast of people. We have Dan. Say hi. Hello, and welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. All right. And uh, we also have Roberto. <laughs> I was trying to welcome. do your job there. Sorry, you, you cut off Roberto there. I yeah, said welcome. You did it again. God damn it, Dan. <laughs> okay, moving hey. on. Clecker. Hi, guys. We're having an interesting start, so bear with us. No, Dan's just fucking ruining everything. <laughs> anyway. That's my job, right? No, your job is to sit there and be quiet when I'm talking. Okay, so JoJo. <laughs> God damn it, Dan. Uh. Anyway, so, uh, with the rest of the intro here, what this podcast is, uh, once again, I said it was a pseudo-random podcast is the name of it, and uh, what this podcast is, it's a, um, it essentially works like a book club between uh, between us four, where we recommend anime and manga to each other, and we pick stuff and put it in order, and we watch or read it, and then we discuss it afterwards. Yeah, uh... As goes with that, since we, we actually go way in depth into like the anime and manga that we watch or read, there's going to be a lot of spoilers in this, and uh, more specifically, the thing we're going to be spoiling the most this uh, this episode is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure episodes 19 through 26, because that's uh, the, the topic for this week. If, uh, if you haven't listened to the two previous to this, I would suggest going back and, and listening to those, because when we talk about... Uh, I believe it's episode 1 through 9 for the first one, and then uh, 10 through 18 for the last two episodes that we did. So I'd suggest go back and reading the or what, listening to those first. Um, along with that, since we do go off on tangents all the time, we're going to be spoiling random other things of different anime. We'll try to um, specify when we're about to spoil something heavily, but we may forget. So if you don't like spoilers, I suggest just not listening to this at all, because there, there are going to be instances where we just forget. And yeah, so heavy spoiler warning. And um, so yeah, I'll go and go over today's uh, today's agenda, what we're going over. First off, we're going to be talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, episodes 19 through 26. Um, then after that, we're going to be talking about uh, any other anime or manga we've been watching or reading throughout the week. As well as uh, after that, we're going to be talking about the random topic of the day, which um, the random topic of today is, what is your most hated anime cliche or trope? So just something that... Anytime you see it, you're just like, fuck that. I, I don't want to watch this anymore. <clears throat> and then after that, we have closing and all that other stuff. Yay. Anyway, so we'll hand it over to Clecker here because he's the one who suggested JoJo's if he wants to um, give a quick description of what exactly the, the I guess, theme or uh, summary of the anime is along with um, going and give a little bit of a recap of what we talked about last week. All right, so the JoJo Bizarre's Adventure series is you're following the adventures of the JoJo family. It goes through a whole bunch of different lineages, so it's not focused on one lineage. So the very first arc of the series was focused on Jonathan Joestar. The next arc of the series, which we dabbled into last time, was focused on Joseph Joestar. And then it pretty much keeps going through the lineage of the Joestar family. And... As so in the beginning, you had Jonathan Joestar who ran into this stone mask that started giving strange properties to people, aka vampiric abilities. And once this happened, Jonathan had to go on this quest to try and destroy his half brother. And in the end, Jonathan died in the process. The series focuses on fate a lot. So a lot of the times, or in most, in most of the arcs that we've seen the joestar family always perishes in the end because they have to fight these vampiric things so last time we talked about the second arc which involved joseph joestar instead of jonathan joestar and he was a lot more cunning and a lot more charismatic and he was really cool and he has gone through this adventure so far and where we left off was we pretty much they were 
on this quest to pretty much get this stone that these three stone mask guys, pretty much what they called the original vampiric beings, stole from them and they're trying to get it back to stop pretty much these vampires from becoming truly immortal because these vampires die in the sunlight. So we left off talking about that and the main thing we left off on is the return of Mr. Von... Von... Von Stroheim! Von Stroheim! Yeah. Fucking cyborg Nazi, yes! Yeah. The best girl of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> 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 Oh god, dude, Ned, you gotta be careful. You just made me peek the shit out of my mic with that. <laughs> Jesus. So, That's fine. Ugh. Von Von Schorheim was a guy we saw originally in the beginning of the arc, and he showed some big balls in sacrificing himself to kill one of the original vampiric beings. He's got balls big enough to be best girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, uh, yep. And... We thought he was dead, but the very last episode, we saw him reappear, and then we saw credits. So, the next nine episodes is what we will talk about now. So, CJ, take it away. So, last episode of the podcast, we kind of went over events that happened in order, and I feel like going back to the way we did it before, where it's just whatever we want to talk about throughout there, and then we'll try to hit on the points afterwards, but, uh, fucking just throwing him into space. Really? <laughs> <laughs> fucking really okay alright CJ he was the ultimate being literally but they said that I, they I said know, he couldn't like, be beaten it, it makes complete sense why it works but he's just like fuck it I'll throw him into space it'll work Actually, you know as soon as he got the plane and he was like trying to figure out a way to beat this guy I was like the only thing I could think about is, well, maybe if he's just thrown out of Earth, because they, they were highlighting a lot of times how he was, like, Earth's, like, strongest being or whatever. Well, what if he's not on Earth or whatever? Does he still have to breathe? I don't know. Uh, and then he did the, he tried to do the magma thing, which... Oh, it's, I, I find it amazing, though, that he's just like, well, he's gonna just drift through space, and sometimes he wish he dies, and eventually he just stopped thinking. I was just like, right, yes, yep. that's the best punishment, <laughs> just fucking drift through exactly. space wishing you like, were dead. He totally deserved that, and, like, that dude, he was the worst, like, out of like out of all those three guys, you know, one fought, fought with... Dude had honor. I, I respected yeah, the exactly, fuck out of him. with a lot of honor and, and pride, dr like, all the way through, and this other dude, uh, what was his name again? Shit. Uh, DC DC. No, ACDC died first, mm -hmm. and then he was Wom. Cars was just a fucking and now Cars. dick. Yeah. Cars was the trickster of the group. He did all dirty tricks just to just to win. He was. Yeah. He was. It's kind of interesting because Joseph does tricks to win, but he did it in a much cooler way. Like Cars He's not was a just dick. a. He doesn't go back on his about word it. and shit too. Exactly, and that's kind of what how he's a gentleman. Like, yeah. he doesn't go back on his word. Cars will fucking stab you in the back as Literally. he to many people. Fucking Lisa Lisa, that <laughs> pissed me the fuck off when that happened. Yeah, I thought she was gonna die, uh, thank god. <laughs> the only thing that I fucking loved about Cars, though, was fucking so good, was he, he was... Like, whenever he was about to battle, he finally, like, took off his fucking, like, head wrap and everything, and was just one of the most fabulous motherfuckers I've seen in the show so far, which is saying a lot. <laughs> just the hair just fucking poof. Let's do this shit. Uh, oh, so funny. good. How about, did you guys get what you expected from Vonheimer? Von fucking Stroheim, yes. Von yeah, Stroheim? I mean, his, dude, like, laser are. beam from his chest? Well, he had machine um, guns from his fucking abdomen and just, like, <laughs> so many things. He's, he's, he's like, a, a Nazi badass Inspector Gadget. It's fucking great. <laughs> the, the first time he showed up, like, he fought a little bit, but he ultimately, I think, lost the fight, the, the, the fight against Scars. And then he was, like, gone for a few episodes, but when he came back to save Jojo from the hundred vampires or whatever, and that scene with the whole uh, German army, I thought that was pretty neat. I really liked that scene. With the German army and their UV lights. They're yeah. The oh, one thing yeah. that could obliterate vampires. I like yeah, how they like... Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, it took a long time for them to figure that out, right? I mean, if they are if they die to the sun, then just like try to replicate the sun or whatever. But they did it at one point, so... 
Right. I love how uh, Speedwagon mentions at one point that like half of their technology, especially this stuff, sp- specifically to fight these guys, was like heavily funded and given a shit ton of research and help from the Speedwagon Foundation. Right, so yeah. <laughs> I thought that was amazing and, and hilarious. It's like, they they hate these guys so much to the point where they're giving Nazis lots of advanced technology. <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. That's that's a lot of hate there. I mean, it makes sense though, because fucking Speedwagon's been there from the beginning, so so he, he knows the shit, man. What'd you guys think of Caesar's death? Oh, dude, oh, fucking shit. Caesar. Oh, yeah, that that hurt a little bit. Caesar, oh, I I I don't know the best way to put this. I knew <laughs> it was gonna fucking happen. I called that shit. Fucking called <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, I think you did. Yeah, last week, right? Yeah. It's it's part of their fate. Their fate yeah. is to die. To sacrifice themselves for the JoJo Fucking family. Joseph didn't, though. Joseph didn't die. Either, which, I mean, it makes sense. Because he, nope. he wouldn't... Well, I, I guess when they started talking about... Because uh, we found out Lisa Lisa was JoJo's uh, mom. And when they started talking about that, I was like, okay, that's how they'll carry on the lineage of the JoJo's and the Joe stars and everything like that. I, c- I, could, un- I could see him dying at that point. Then they fucking threw you a curveball. He's like, oh, he's not dead anyway. He just shows up at his own funeral. It's like, what? Okay. That was that was hilarious. Yes, that was amazing. Him was and he was with Suzy Q. Q. Yeah, he was with Suzy mm-hmm. Q. And Just in like, fact, he God damn it, you didn't send the Suzy telegram. Q. So yeah, so good. Anyway, back to what you were talking about, though. Yeah, Caesar, Caesar's death, like the way he fucking sacrificed himself and everything for JoJo. That was that was pretty epic. And he, how he ended up, um, because he ended up pretty much understanding at that point how his family was meant to really just be there to help the uh the jojos and that's a like that's their goal in life pretty much or not goal in life that's just their fate really to help the jojos and sacrifice themselves so that way they can live and he'd up doing that by like fucking pulling the uh the ring off of him after he just fought and got his like they kind of kicked each other asses but then uh caesar ended up losing right there at the end and he he just grabbed the ring and he like wham was like why why would you do that and everything you you just like i forgot exactly what he said but he was like well, one, you already lost, and two, like, why would you really care about that? He's like, because this is something I needed to, I'd, I'd rather give myself up and use my last bit of power to help my friends and everything, the people I care about, than really try to save myself or anything. And it was it was pretty epic. Dude was fucking cool. And made made the fucking bubble out of his, the last of his blood, too. Like, fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Uh, Those bubbles. <laughs> oh, the bubbles got badass. Yeah, Turn them yeah. into fucking, like, shurikens. They- <laughs> and you thought the bubbles were dumb. It's fucking bubbles. What the hell? I, I, how was I, I supposed to know they're you dumb. Turn like them they're... into fucking shuriken type of shit. Yeah, they got super powerful. But <laughs> I, I just think it's like kind of ridiculously hilarious to think that this dude, like his main power is to attack bubbles. Yeah. But, but yeah. he was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really like that character as well. The more we saw of him, the more we found out about his, his past and his story and everything, the more. Uh, we got to like him until he died. Oh, yeah, like, one thing I fucking loved is right before he got into the battle with Wham, they killed him. He, uh, he actually got into a fight with Jojo because he ended up insulting, uh, Jojo ended up insulting Caesar's family and yeah. his lineage and everything like that, and he got super pissed, and that shows just how strong his emotions were towards that, which showed some flashback stuff of how he used to not even really care about his lineage and family and all that, but how that changed and all that. Like it was, it was pretty epic. Shit's crazy, man. Yep, shit's crazy. <laughs> I will say you were you're really onto something, CJ. Last episode with how you thought that Joseph might have died, because we see this reoccurring trend that every male member keeps dying by yeah, vampires. Right. Well, yeah, whether like, they were even when I was watching it, I was like, not. like when I was watching, I was like, "Fuck yeah, called that shit, do it!" And then he showed up at his funeral. I was like, "God damn it, <laughs> so close." <laughs> it was- because we also learned that. His father, George Joestar, also died by a vampire. Yeah, we oh, got that yeah. flashback scene as well, which was really, yeah. really good. I forgot about that. Which also explained why Lisa Lisa left the family and when she practiced him on her own, just so that she could avenge him, right? Yes. What was that? And she fucking... Because the, the, all the generals and everything didn't know about the vampires of the homeowner or anything like that, and they thought she just brutally murdered this dude and burnt his yeah. body. <laughs> so she was going to get hunted down anyway, and the Speedwagon Foundation had to, like, take her off and cover her tracks and stuff so that way she wouldn't be caught. I still really like to just listen to the, the word Speedwagon Foundation. 
It just sounds so badass. <laughs> it is an awesome foundation. Speedwagon's still one of my favorite characters. Although, him being old, he doesn't look near as cool as he did before. He looked so cool when he was younger. Like, the fucking fancy hats and, like, all that shit. Uh, he right, still had... He, 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 he still had some fancy hats. It's just... He was nowhere that? near as outrageous and fabulous as he used to be, though. <laughs> That's true. Well, I mean, you had these, like, ancient beings that were, like, su- super fabulous, especially car, like, cars, like, at the end was just like, yep. Especially once he, like, became the perfect, like, being. He was just like, I'm fabulous! Well, then he's, like, even even talking to one of my fucking co-workers again, uh, I think it was yesterday. I was talking to her and stuff about that, and uh, I was just talking about how I was like, because I said the same thing like first and did with you guys, like fucking threw him into space, really, and then like I just went from there. And then she was like, "My hand is a squirrel. Your argument is invalid." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, okay. <laughs> no, I just speak my mic, but uh, how random was that, dude? <laughs> like, it, it, it turned was... into a squirrel, and then into a butterfly or something. And oh, it's great, man! It was it was hilarious because he he. He just controls life. He can turn himself into whatever fucking... Fuck it, right. I want wings instead of arms now. And now they turn into fucking piranhas after I shoot them into a plane. It's like, okay. <laughs> you you also, just do whatever did, you want. Did they explain when G- when did JoJo learn she'll pilot a plane? <laughs> he can't. That's the that's the joke. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it seemed very convenient the way that like he just jumped off a, like a canyon or something. And then he just comes out like flying the plane. Well, you gotta think, he's also been, um, he's known Speedwagon for fucking years. I'm assuming he taught him how to do a lot of stuff, at least the basics at one point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, I mean, hell, the Speedwagon Foundation supplied that plane or something, probably, I don't know. Right. Uh, it's, it's pretty great. Anyway, and, Clicker, I think you had more questions or something? Well, we'll kind of uh, let no, you drive No, I didn't this. have any questions this time around. Oh, well. Well, what did you guys think of the the history of the, the stone mask and the red stone of Aja? Oh, going back to, like, fucking, like, Egyptian times and shit? Aztec. Aztec times, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was very interesting. That was pretty cool because they, um, because it showed just the contrast between the people and some of their, their, like, even then, their own, like, species kind of turned against these guys because they were trying to do these, like, trying to uh, make themselves stronger and all that and beat the sun, and they they were even still outcasts and everything by their own people, and that was, like, fucking crazy. That was a big shock. I was not expecting that. And at the end, they mentioned that one of the dudes was cars, and then he had one ally and two babies or something. Right when they ran away, I think they mentioned something like that. Mm-hmm. So I assume like the two dudes were cars and ACDC, and the babies were Wom because he referred to them as masters or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and the other one would be Santana then. Yeah, because they they even referred to him as like the watchdog and everything. So he was right. like even below Wham. Speaking of Wham and cars, or mostly Wham, that fucking that chariot battle. Holy shit, <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. Like, that was very surprised. Was awesome. That's yeah. that's the best battle I've seen so far in this series. That shit was epic. Like so many twists. <laughs> I I don't even know. I don't know how to describe it without people watching it. It's just it had everything a fight needed, pretty much. And more. I mean, it was surprising from the beginning when you were expecting them to just go there and fight and in, in a duo or something. And then they had there a two horses in there. So what the hell is this? And then they they go over the roads and everything. And... Mm-hmm. I mean, rules, not really rules, but just yeah. that, like, the way that it, the, it was kind of a race, but the point was you get the weapon first and you use it to defeat the enemy. But there was a lot of strategy involved as well with Wham letting JoJo get the weapon on purpose or whatever. Uh, and then, I don't know, just a, so, so much stuff happened into that fight that it's yeah. even hard to, like, just summarize it. Some, some of really the really big moments were awesome, though. Like, when Wham felt like he was defeating just, like, Fuck it, time to stab my eyes out and see you through the wind. <laughs> like, oh yeah, because it, it you could you could see distinct phases of the fight that were really cool, like that, like because that that was um essentially it it boils down to is uh, a it's 
I guess they were talking about like gladiators have this type of thing where they end up having some form of fight or flight type of thing when they feel like they've already been defeated. They either kind of just give in or they have this last bit of thing that like straightens them out and gets their mind back in the focus. And Wham's was literally just to stab his own eyes out because he said something about like, I trusted my eyes to see too much when I shouldn't have. And like, and he ends up fucking getting back in the fight and still kicking some ass after that. Right. Yeah. He, uh, that, like all the stuff that Joseph does in that fight is also really cool. Like he has to really pull out all his stops. Yeah. I think the thing I loved um, the most in that fight, though, was actually at the end whenever, like, there's literally just, like, Wham's head is the only thing that's left, and JoJo's, like, doing stuff so much to the point where he's actually honoring him by, like, using his own blood to kind of, like, I guess he said to, like, soothe the wounds a little bit so it hurt less right. before he died and all that, and just showing the dude so much respect from, like, the type of stuff that he even did with, um, it mostly goes back to what he did with, like, Caesar and everything and not not like being brutal to him after he knew he had won and all that and showing him respect and everything like that and letting him create the the blood bubble and everything with the um lip ring in it so that way he could give it to Jojo with that like i don't know it 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 was just showing the respect to each other that was really cool i like that a lot what else smoky why did this is something that i didn't understand i hope <laughs> you guys can explain it to me why did Speedwag- Speedwagon bring Smokey to that final fight? Because that didn't sound very safe to me. <laughs> um, because he's the one that explained the whole Lisa thing. If you remember correctly, like, he's the one that's like, hey, but that's his mom. Like, that's not right. Right, no, I remember that. My point well, he's was asking like, why he was even there in the first yeah, place, though. Like, why, yeah, like, what was he doing there? Cause Cause like, speed- comic relief? Yeah, yeah, probably. It seems no. to me like uh, they kind of just took in Smokey, and it seems like Smokey's probably going to be, like, the next person after Speedwagon to kind of take over the Speedwagon Foundation, so he seems almost like an apprentice to me. So that's kind of what I'm assuming is going to happen with him. Right, that makes sense. I also thought of him as sort of a plot tool. Like, they purposely put it in there, put him in there so that he could ask Speedwagon, and Speedwagon would have a reason to go over the the flashback and everything. Oh, you know, telling yeah. JoJo's story, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. That and I love, fucking love at the end of that, where, like, when it, right when, right after Cars actually turns into, like, the final form and everything like that, and um, uh, JoJo's like, all right, Smokey, we've got the last, the, the, the last final plan here. He's like, you mean that final plan? He's like, yep, do it with all the might that you have. Do it and you, you can't anymore. <laughs> Run! And does, like, the way he always, like, says it that's fucking hilarious while he's running right. away. <laughs> Which, I, I love mean. that part because although he was technically expected it, I didn't expect it at all. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, neither like, Even I. though it happened, like, t- twice or three times, I don't know, before, like, I still didn't see it coming at that point. It was just so funny when he did. Well, when he said that, then Smokey replied, he's like, you mean that plan? I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Uh, so you want? Should we talk about the uh the full battle that ensues after that? Yeah, go for it. Shit was crazy. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got in a plane, so he was running away with the plane. Not really running away, of course, just like trying to drag cars away from the rest of his people yeah. and stuff. Until he had the idea of throwing like the plane against cars in the direction of a volcano, so that cars would die in the magma. Mm-hmm. But it didn't quite work out. It looked like it worked out. I thought that would be the end, but nope. Well, another thing it showed that was awesome about Jojo or Joseph specifically is he was willing to accept it to the point where, like, to to try to kill him and everything, he was willing to actually go down with the plane into the lava. And uh, then fucking Stroheim just pops out a part of the ship and he's like, "Hey, yeah. <laughs> jump! I'll catch you." There you go. Like, he literally was a plane at the end. Yeah. Fucking grabbed him and fucking landed, shattered like half of his fucking body off again. Because I think he's went through like three of them that we've seen, three or four, including his original, obviously. But um, yeah, he probably. just fucking destroys his body left and right. But then they end up having, like, he catches him there. Then obviously the the fucking magma didn't kill the guy, so they had to figure out other ways. What okay. I love about a character space. Yep. Yep. What I love about a character like Von Stroheim is that. Like, when Joseph gets introduced or Caesar gets introduced, you already kind of expect him to have, like, a big importance on the 
on the series, obviously, and you expect them to be very strong and to fight and everything. But Von Stroheim, at the first time that he showed up, to me, he would really like only be there for that episode. You know, I thought he would yeah. only be the guy who brought Santana back to life, gave him his name, and then he would die. I thought that was it. So the fact that like he did, like he got all that, uh, all that part on the episode where he supposedly died, and then he came back and he fought against cars, and then he came back again, and he kept like getting destroyed, but never giving up. You know, and just being very fabulous every time he. And I think we we say fabulous like. A lot of times when we're recording this, but I, well, no, I it's, it's it mostly just... just like whenever they're covered in pink and jewelry and their hair is <laughs> yes. fucking three <laughs> foot high and wide, and they're just they always have the poses where like your your body should not be able to make that pose, like, <laughs> like Dio's pose. God, that pose. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he, he was really kind of out of nowhere, and he became like one of the best characters of the series. He might actually be my favorite character of the series. What, Vonheim? Yeah. It's von ah, Stronheim. Yeah. Von Stronheim. Sorry. Yeah, that like he he's definitely one of my favorites. I'm not sure if he's my favorite character. I definitely I definitely like Joseph better than Jonathan now though, cuz the thing that made it so much better is at the end of this battle, he ended up using pretty much accidentally using the stone to cause uh, like a big eruption in the volcano to shoot him and cars up into the air. And this is how he actually gets launched into space and everything. But um, the thing that made it the best is he was doing the usual stuff where he's like, and now you say this. And then, like, something else happened. I think rocks flew up and hit him in the face and a bunch of other shit. And he was just, like, laughing at him, telling him this stuff. And he's like, you planned all of this, didn't you, Joseph? And in his <laughs> mind, he was like, nope, it all just Not happened. Not actually. <laughs> but this is going to drive him fucking crazy. And he was like, yes, of course I did. And I planned this, too. And something else happened and all that. And it's just fucking epic. Like It was, it was oh. great. So, so overall, good. what'd you guys think of just the series? Fucking just crazy awesome shit. Yeah, I don't I know think, what to say. <laughs> I mean, not like I have watched a lot of them, but for this kind of like fighting based series, I think this is my favorite. Oh was, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was really amazing and fabulous for what he did and he had no filler. You know, this it, it, it was like No filler, yeah. So it, it was kind of like Dragon Ball, but without the bad stuff of Dragon Ball in my opinion. You know, like, everything, all the fights felt important, and there was a lot to every fight, and there wasn't a lot of, like, they didn't spend, like, fucking 30 minutes for him to use just one hit, you know, like, for him to give one punch or whatever. Yeah. Uh, like, the in, the fights were long for the most part, but that's because they had multiple stages that kept changing, and that were uh, fundamentally different from each other. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, it was very good, very entertaining. Yeah, I... I... Definitely loved the um, because I usually don't like any type of like shonen fighting stuff or anything like that, and it was kind of like what Dan said, no filler and everything made it a hell of a lot better. But the thing I loved the most was one, all the fucking amazing, super unique characters, and just the fact that there was so much character development even across fucking generations of people. You still see the same character development from the first guy in the second guy in certain ways, and it just it gave it a whole nother, a whole new depth to it because it's not just a bunch of like fucking generic fighting bullshit. It's like, oh, there's some supernatural powers involved. That makes it cool. No, it doesn't. When you're just fucking a fucking Joe star and you make shit cool then. <laughs> right. Like, and I also think awesome. it had like good enough closure because I didn't really expect them to explain everything that happened after Jonathan's accident and the way that like, Arena went out with, uh, like, she was pregnant, but she had a baby that she got in the ship. And then they went to explain that that baby was uh, Lisa Lisa and that she was raised by straights. And that uh, Joe, like, the new Jojo, Joseph's father, died by a vampire. And then she killed that vampire and then she ran away. And then they explained the, the actual reason why the stone masks were created in the first place and everything. So there was a lot more... Just closure and explanation of all the plot elements than I expected. Because it's very easy for these kinds of shows to just be like, yeah, it is, it exists, whatever. Like, someone yeah. made it at one point. Yeah, like like I said, this is definitely a much more, like, well thought out. As we see with both the character development and the characters themselves, like, it just seems like everything in this show is just way more well thought out and just, it, it, it benefits greatly from it. It's just so much of a better anime because of that, and... 
like this is going to be one of the few because it, it seems like because from what I've I've talked to some people and it seems like it's going to be a really long running anime if they make it all like a couple hundred episodes or something probably. But Damn. um, oh yeah, like we're we just finished part two and I think there's, there's like fucking yeah, like there's a lot of parts. parts. I mean, the guy's been making yeah. this series since the eighties, so so like if this does end up like doing even even if it does all of it in anime, I will probably watch all of it because from what I've heard, even whenever. They keep getting, like, even whenever it's super long, they keep making stuff new and fresh, but it follows, like, this similar formula, so you have all the same stuff where it's, like, I I don't know, it just, it's it's gonna be one of the few shown in, like, fighting animes and stuff that I'm actually probably gonna follow. Like, I don't know when I will, but I, I definitely will end up watching uh, the third part at one point. Yeah, I'm, I feel the same way. Like, since the story has already been uh, well wrapped up, and everything with Joseph is kind of finished and well explained. I'm also like, it's not like I'm super excited to see the next one. Like, I need to see it right now. I'll take my time. I have other stuff that I'm ready to watch for now. But at one point, I also want to go I'll back say to this. follow through. Yeah. Next, I like, will say this. Yeah. Joseph ages like a fine wine. That's... <laughs> oh, so it's All like right. Goku? Cause... <laughs> it's like a grandparent and still like, oh, shit, yeah. Did in you the, see after the credits? Yeah, at, in, the, in the end. I don't even think it was, I don't even know if it was after the credits, actually, but there was, like, there was a scene where they showed him old, or like a mustache. Oh, was yep. that him when he was that yelling was about the Japanese Joseph and stuff? Joestar. Yep, Oh, that's my him. God, I was hoping that was him. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't sure either. Like, I was like, yeah, is that him? I thought he was, but I wasn't absolutely sure. There's one more thing. Yeah, I, I kind of thought it was just from the way he reacted whenever the dude yeah. bumped into him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, you're Japanese, are you? Well, fuck the Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> He's just super pissed. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, and it is, like, it is something made by Japanese people. <laughs> yeah. Well, his reasoning was kind of funny, too, because he, he said he never gets to see his daughter because she married somebody right. in Japan. And uh, I, it was it was funny. At first, I thought it was something to do with like World War II or whatever, but it was actually something a lot more like stupid and uh, trivial yeah. than that. But it didn't look it didn't look like him at all. But it was through his reaction and personality that he kind of seemed like yeah. The the instant well. snap kind of made me think it was him, right? <laughs> but did you guys see the the little bit at the end of everything? I don't think I think I what missed the that? teaser for the next part. Oh no, oh. I did not. I I. Did I not. Apparently, I didn't actually watch after the credits, if it was after the credits. I'm just about to verify that. Yes, there's a, a boat in the Atlantic, and they're searching for stuff at the bottom. Oh. Wait, what do you think they might find down there? Some type of Pillarman bullshit or masks. Cause... Do you remember the end of the first series? <gasps> Deal. Fuck. Oh, was it, um... Fuck. They're searching for buried treasure from a lost ship. Yeah, oh, it was the, it was the it was the one where they originally had the first mask and everything, where the dude, like the, the one of the guys in dad, ended up actually going crazy. It was Zeppeli. It was Zeppeli's dad ended up going crazy. I think, no, I think Mario. Well, I, th I I when they when they said I thought they were talking about the actual like Dio versus Jonathan battle in the ship, and the ship ultimately like gets on fire and sinks, and then uh, Erina. Uh, runs away with the baby. So I thought they were referring to that ship, right? Oh, Dio's that hat. I am inside. referring to that ship. I am. We are referring to that ship. I See? thought it was the one where, when they originally dug up the first mask, there's somebody on the ship whose dad ended up using it or something, and he killed all the whole crew except one guy, and I think it was Zeppeli. Oh yeah, actually I remember that as well. That was yeah. And ended up training story. with the monks for three years after that, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, no, I'm talking about right. the ship from the end of the first. That part. makes more sense now. Yeah. So, so the, wait, the other one never said if it uh, if it crashed or not or anything or sank or whatever. So you're telling me that Dio, Dio may, may come, come back? back? I can neither confirm nor know. deny. You might have to watch Stardust Crusaders. Oh, that means what? What if something happened with Jonathan? Jonathan may be coming back too. Oh God. I, I would like that to happen. I need to watch more of this now. Stardust Star Crusaders. Star Crusaders. It's good. I recommend it. <sighs> God damn it, I have other <laughs> stuff I need to watch yeah. too. Is is that the one that's releasing now? Yes. Yes. The second part is the, the Egypt arc is happening. The Egypt arc. <sighs> All right. Cool. So, um, damn it, now that has to be bumped up in my queue. <laughs> so, I guess we all really like JoJo. Yep. That's the conclusion, I'd right? say so. Pretty much, you should yeah. watch mm -hmm. it. <laughs>
Fuck, I'd, I'd say it's good enough to pour. I'd give it a solid nine. That's what I gave it, I'm pretty sure. Dan out of Dan. I, Dan I, out of Dan. Okay. <laughs> you guys will criticize me, but I'll stick with an eight. Eight's fine. It's fine. That's it's fair. still it's it's still really good. Yeah, I, like I said, like I really liked it, and I'm I'm usually like 99% of the time just like CJ as well, not a fan of this kind of show. So like, like it was always like kind of fighting against my own prejudice, <laughs> but it bit it, and I really liked it. As I said, not sure if nine territory, yet, but it was very good. I'm actually just now updating my anime list. I originally gave it an eight, but I'd rather give it a nine now. So I kind of feel I kind of feel you there, Dan. Ah, <sighs> all right, cool. Us, so I think us we're talking much... about the series made you like it more. I love it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, it made me remember the things that were made it amazing. Yeah. But um, anyway, let's move on to our second part of our podcast here, and talk about what we've been watching or reading this week. Which I'll go ahead and start off this time, and say that first off I finally got my Koi Monogatari in so decided to watch that again and watch Kaiki's fucking monologues and all that shit again which are fucking great Kaiki! Oh, that's awesome <laughs> so, I love that arc that's one of my favorite arcs yeah it's it's amazing and um that's really the main thing that I that I watched other than JoJo's um cause I mean hell that just came in yesterday right but um I haven't really watched anything else but uh, I've also I have been reading some stuff I started I think I'm two chapters into it now. I actually started um, Madaka Box. Oh. Which is there you go. very interesting. And I'm very glad that they're very long chapters too and not like 15 or 20 like pages. They're like fucking 40 to 60. So it's, it's a fucking meaty, uh, meaty manga there. Like it's, it's pretty great. And yeah, I, I've been enjoying that. I, I really hope I'll continue to. That's the one that Roberto talked about. Uh, a few weeks ago, right? Yes. Where, well, yeah. like, the secondary character has to become the main character, and you wanted, like, there are a lot of tropes, like, making fun of a lot of typical manga tropes and stuff. Yep. A lot of fourth <sighs> wall stuff. Very self-aware. Oh, I haven't really hit too much of that yet. It's mostly, it mostly just built up the characters, had a little bit of stuff happen, and they had, like, just, I think it was the first resolution thing, the thing with the judo club. Was mm-hmm. the main thing that happened, and that's about it. They didn't really hit any of the self-aware stuff or fourth wall stuff yet, but it it definitely seems like it's a very interesting concept, and I think I'll enjoy it. So I'll probably continue with it, especially considering it's from one of my fucking. I mean, just the dude wrote the fucking Monogatari series. I'm gonna like pretty much most <laughs> of his stuff, most likely. So have you watched Mecha City Actors, something like that? Did I say the name? No, right? I have it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the that's the name. Okay, I think that's from the same author as well, right? It's from Shaft. I know they animated it, so that's why it might look like. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I haven't watched that one. I just I, I was I almost started watching that one recently. I don't think so though. Oh my god! I just realized something amazing because I'm actually looking at the the box for Koi Monogatari now. Fucking on the front here, or maybe the back. I I don't know what it's considered. Fucking whatever. But it has uh, Sinjo Gahara in her like, in her winter clothes with like the blue coat and the pervert. Yeah, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but it has her in her in her blue like winter stuff, like her super thick jacket and everything. And then she's actually like um, squatting down. She's making a little pervert. like t- shut the fuck up, Dan. <laughs> she's squatting down, making a little snowman with fucking uh, Aradagi's like hair spike sticking out of it. That's it's fucking hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> Let me see if I can find a picture real fast. You guys need to see this. It it makes me happy. Like, none of that was perverted, Dan. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Hey, Roberto, since you're usually, like, following everything that's being released, by any chance are you watching one called How to Raise a Boring Girlfriend? No, I, I didn't pick that one up. Oh, okay. I'm going to start I, that one soon. Is it, okay. is I'm it not watching good? that one either, but I read the synopsis and it seems good. Like, I... I heard some people say it's good, and then the synopsis sounds really interesting. The, the story is basically about like a guy who meets uh, an average girl, but I think he like for some reason he wants to use her as a role model for a dating sim that he's making. But she has nothing really interesting at all. She's just like a normal girl. So it, it, I heard it's basically making fun of most of the usual dating sim tropes and uh, like kind of female characters and stuff. Uh, I think he's like trying to explain it to her, like trying to make her become different characters or whatever. 
just the kind of stuff that is a little bit self-aware and seems interesting. But I have that on my queue. I'll probably start it. You guys should look at that picture I just linked. But yeah, I'm, I don't know when I'm going to start that one, Dan. That's one I do plan on watching, though. It, it seems interesting. But um, that's that's pretty much it for as far as like what I've been watching and reading this week. It's been pretty, pretty slow again because I've been doing some other stuff over the weekend and um, this past couple days too. So uh, Dan, if you want to actually go ahead with what you have been watching or reading, unless you haven't, that's why you brought that up. Uh, well, not not uh, I haven't done much, but I did start watching Amagami SS Plus, which is the show that we were talking uh, about a few weeks ago. It's actually like on the first first and second episodes of this podcast, we talked about a show called Amagami SS, where it's basically a harem where the main character pursues every different girl of the harem in self-contained arcs, and it's really good. We really liked it. You can listen to a lot more thoughts on it on the first episodes of our show. But there's a second like mini season for it uh, of, I think, 12 episodes. And it's basically two episode arcs for each girls. And I just watched, I just started watching and I watched the first arc, which is the best girl, Tsukasa. No, not best girl. Uh, yeah. No. It's the best girl, guys. No. It continues, you might, you might want to watch this, Clacker, actually, you probably like it. It continues mm. right after the, the story from the, the original arc, but differently than I thought, it doesn't actually go into explaining much of the unexplained parts of the original. It's more like a different self-contained story. It almost feels like a, a, an OVA, honestly. Like, it is a continuation, it is a direct continuation, but it is its own self-contained arc, and it doesn't really relate much to what happened before. But it's good. It's good so far. I like the, the first arc. It's basically uh, about Tsukasa running for st being the student council president. And one of the other runners is Sai, the girl that everybody hates. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> yeah, and she's running for student council president. And I thought that was pretty hilarious because it actually kind of looks like they're just like they, they made her do it so that she's not shy anymore. So almost like her arc on Amagami SS. Well, even in Omegami SS Plus, they still carry a lot of that stuff through. Where yeah. they're like, you, you still see all like usually most of the other characters in each arc and everything, and it's 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 pretty good from what I can remember. I'll, I'll, I need to actually go back and watch it because I haven't watched it in probably at least a year or two, so I need to go back and watch that again. So far, it's pretty good. I recommend it, but that's about it. I only watched the first few episodes of that. I'm planning on starting the other one that I was talking about. Nice. All right, Roberto, what have you been watching or reading this week? Uh, this week, I finished up watching the Nozo X Kimi OVAs, which is a spinoff to Nozokiana, if you guys didn't know. Yes. Oh. I'm going to look into that. Is... Yeah, so there's three episodes, and they kind of recap three of the arcs from the manga, which I'm also reading. Is that the one where they're in an apartment complex and they see across each other's like the yes. courtyard? That one's pretty solid. That's right, solid. and they have to show each other every day. That one's pretty solid. Not as good really as like Nozokiana, though. I actually think I like this one more. Why? But they're both great, regardless. So does he have like the same main characters and stuff? Oh, no. Oh, so it's I don't think we've gotten to that point where they've like, oh, we're in the same world yet, but... That from what I've read, and I've read all of the manga, I have not seen anything to, sh to show that they're part of the same thing yet. If I did, I kind of skimmed over it and didn't pay attention to it. Oh, it's, okay. It's essentially just by the same guy. It's a similar concept to Nozokiana. It's just, it, it's a different group of people. Right. But I think it is actually a spinoff, though. Yeah. I I would, Clicker, you should definitely check it out since you did, like, uh, Nozokiana so much. I would definitely suggest checking it out. What's it called again? Nozo X Kimi. Nozo X Kimi. All right, I'll keep it a look out. Uh, look out for it. It's if good. you look Nozo Kiano on my anime list, it shows up as in as in a spinoff. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else, Roberto? Other than my usual weeklies, no. Anything right, happen a... interesting in the usual weeklies? Um. I'm behind on Durarara, so don't spoil anything for that. <laughs> I'm like two episodes behind, I think. Nothing really. I think Log Horizon was pretty good last episode. I gotta catch up with that. But I'm not gonna talk about that. Yeah, I gotta I gotta catch up with that too. They, well, actually, no, I gotta wait for them to catch up enough where I can just watch it in one block because yep. 
it it fucking killed me watching the first like arc or two in in the new season of that. Oh my god, it fucking killed me. Cause I'm up to thirteen, and I, I I've been on thirteen for a few weeks now, and I kind of been the same. I I don't know if I want to go on. Oh yeah, we actually talked about that a little bit where you were here the other day. Correct. Oh yeah, I got to I got to play Smash with Klecker the other day. It's pretty great. Goddamn villager. <laughs> He's so fun. He is he is by far the funnest character I've played in that game. He's not the one I'm best with, obviously, but oh my god, the villager just like I'm gonna drop a bowling ball on you, and then I'm gonna chop a tree down on top of you, <laughs> and then I'm gonna poke the ground with a stick and do a happy dance to make fun of you, and it's just so good. Kill you with turnips. <laughs> you know what? I finally started playing last week the hmm. Walking Dead game. Have you guys played that? No, I've not. Nope. I'm not a fan of nope. the Telltale style. So yeah, like I enjoy watching people play them because it it plays out as a pretty good story, but I I don't enjoy playing their games. Right. I never cared for it. Like I, I looked at a few videos and stuff back in the day when it came out, and I was like, I don't know why this is getting so much hype and why so many people like this. But I finally like sit down and played it. I think I bought it on Steam on a sale like a year ago or something, and then I finally took some time to go in and try it out, and I actually like really liked it. And it's that thing, you know, there isn't a lot of gameplay, but just the story and the 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 shocking moments that the story puts on your hands. I, I, Really, do you I actually like, watch the series itself? I I do not. I never watched the Walking Dead TV show, okay. and I never read any of the comics or anything. So I went into this blind. Just I want to experience this game and know what it is about. And the thing that is so good about it is that it makes you take like very heartbreaking decisions. You know, like it makes you choose who's going to live and who's going to die. And all the characters are so cool and interesting that no matter who you kill off, you're probably going to feel bad afterwards. And obviously, like you're not really going to be directly killing them but a lot of times it's about choosing who you're gonna save and stuff uh, anyway i really like it so far i play the first three episodes one thing you should definitely check out though if you liked that then is the wolf among us right because wolf among us is made by the same guys and it takes place in a in a universe where like there are a lot of characters from fairy tales like sleeping beauty and the big bad wolf and everything like that where they they have like a human form and they're trying to blend in with human society and there's a lot of things that happen with that, and it's it's really good. Right. Since I don't really care for the like the zombie part of it, or like the actual Walking Dead lore or anything, I just like the way they made the game. Um, I, I I think I'll probably get into everything they've done after that. As soon as yeah. I'm done with the the first season of Walking Dead. The Wolf Among Us is great. From what I've heard, the Tales from the Borderlands is pretty good too. And um, so I, I'd check both of those out. I'll probably I'll probably start the Wolf Among Us next. All right. So anyway, um, anyway, <laughs> actually, Clicker, did I ask you what you've been watching? Uh, I didn't really watch anything this weekend because I my uncle visited me, so oh, I really yeah. haven't been like, I haven't watched anything major this week. All right. Anybody else have anything else at all to add to that? Um, nope. Nope. Kaiki's right. best girl. <laughs> Who? Kaiki. Kaiki. Oh, Kaiki. <laughs> Just you know there's actually right now there's a on reddit there's a best guy contest and he's part of that <laughs> i hope he That's wins awesome. Just he will. because he, yeah. he totally will well they have stuff like fucking like armstrong from full metal alchemist into oh my god like that, that's, that's some pretty good competition i'm pretty sure they have spike from cowboy bebop like there's a lot of good guy characters i'm pretty sure they have uh, I, I didn't see him but i think vash the stampede is in there like there's a lot of good characters in there. I doubt he's going to win because I think someone like Vash or like Spike or something like that's going to win just because yeah. of the Popularity nostalgia of, of the show. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's um let's go ahead and move on to our Oh wow, we're already at the uh the third topic of the day. Okay. So, the third topic of the day is our random topic of the day, which this time is what is your most hated anime cliche or trope? And um I'll go ahead Oops. and go last cuz I have a few of them here. And I don't want it to. Uh, I don't want to step on somebody else's if they only have one. So, let's see. How about we get Roberto to go first? Okay. So my hated trope that really makes me mad is fake deaths. Mm. Now, what I mean is 
when the story forces you to invest in a character and then they kill him off. But then they magically bring them back without really explaining it, you know, or they just make up some deus ex machina reason why they're back or whatever. Yeah. So, and one of the big offenders of that is his bleach. And I think a lot of people know that where it's like you think this character died, but then next chapter, or next episode, he's back and he's fine. And you're like, what the hell? He took on the most biggest attack from the enemy and he's still Eisen. here. Yeah. God damn fucking Eisen. <laughs> Oh. Or, you know, you just play tricks on you the whole time. Roberto, one thing yes. I, I've read recently is huge spoilers for a manga that I love, Fuka. Huge spoilers for this. I I heard. Yeah, I've heard something recently where I think it's like chapter 60 or so. They're thinking about doing some supernatural elements to bring her back. And I will be so angry because I have grieved for her. Exactly. That's kind of what pisses uh. me off, you know. You invest in their death, and you, you grow to accept it, and then it's just like, well, gee, thanks for shitting on my feelings. Dude, I, yeah. I will be so mad. I will be so mad at fucking Seo Kyoji. You have no idea. But goddammit, I'll still probably read the manga. <laughs> I'm trying to, I've, I've thought this several times with him. I'm trying to think of a series that has done that to me. Naruto didn't do it for you? Oh, I know one. Uh, which one? Spoilers for Clan Ed. Planet. Oh, and of oh yeah. God, no! <laughs> that one, yeah. yeah. Oh, forgot right. about that. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, and granted, my, it is bittersweet emotions. because part of you wants it to happen, but at the same time, just the fact that I, they play with your emotions so hard. Oh, you know? all the feels, man. So many feels. Uh, let's go back to a happy place. <laughs> <laughs> Hating on things. <laughs> So Oops. school days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's not happy. That's a, that... oh, I'm I'm sad now. You want me to I'm start so singing now. um that song? No, I don't. I hate yeah. that song. <laughs> let's just let's move. What Dungo? <laughs> I hate it so Dungo, much. Dungo, Shut Dungo, up, Dungo, Clifford. Dungo, not Dungo, Clifford. Dungo, Dungo, Dungo. Dungo. You know, fucking Steven does that sometimes. We'll just be sitting there and I'll start singing that with a happy face, like staring at me, like wide eyed. Like, you know exactly the, the face I'm talking about. Yeah. I'll just sit there and sing it, do a little dance with it and everything. I'm just like, I hate you so much right now. And Steven's my roommate for everybody who fucking doesn't know. And it's it's one of the guys we went to college with, too. So. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm sad from that now. <laughs> okay. So, so um, do, do you have any other. Any other things or any more ex explanation or anything, Roberto? No, I mean, it it just makes me upset when you have to invest in that kind of thing. All right. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go on to Clicker here then. All right. My trope that I hate, and this is popular with big series, is right before a big battle, like you're in the middle of a battle, break filler. Like, that pisses me off to no end. Oh, like. Like Dragon Ball Z was just like, let's sit Dra here and just yell at each other for 20 minutes. Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, even uh, even One Piece has done it, surprisingly. Yeah, um, I fucking hate that shit. I'm having there with a flashback you, in the middle of a fight. Yeah, they, they did that during the Water 7 arc, which, I mean, to be... Flashbacks aren't that bad. It's it's not that bad, but it still was. It still irks me to no end because you know you know a big battle's about to come, and then they're like, um, stop. Yeah, I I just hate in the middle. Like that's why I can't go back and watch Dragon Ball Z anymore, even though I want to, is because like, fucking like ten episodes for one battle because they'll punch each other two times and then yell at each other the rest of the episode and then be going in for a punch at the end and that's it. It's like. Fucking really? Just fight the dude. Like, this goes back to what we were talking about before, why I like JoJo so much. It's like, hey, we're fighting. Oh, you're dead. Moving on. <laughs> it's fucking great. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm right there with you, Clicker. Anything else you have, though? Any other tropes, cliches, or anything? Uh, not really. That's just the one that irks me the most, probably. Alright. Alright, go ahead, Dan. I think I'll just go with boobs. You guys were going to a little more, like, serious <laughs> examples, but just, like, the typical scene where, like, the dude is riding a bike, and then the girl sits on the back and, like, hugs him, 
and they show like they highlight the fact that her boobs are touching his back. So you don't and like? And they when... do that. Like I'm not saying I'm not saying I necessarily hate it. It so just gets so repetitive. You're talking about all the. So you're talking about all the interactions with boobs then, and how it's such a big deal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the fact that they make okay. such a big deal out of it, and they like highlight it so much. You know, like I don't know. I so don't you think don't like, like. I don't think. Here's the thing. Naturally, I don't think being hugged from the back from uh from a girl is like when 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 that happens. I don't think you're usually thinking about the fact that her boobs are touching you. At least I wasn't like that. I'm not like that. But like in anime, it's, it's usually not erotic. Like it, that, exactly. No. Yeah, and in anime, they always make that kind of scene very erotic. And even on, you know, Amagami SS Plus, which I was watching now, like, I was watching recently, they had that happen. Uh, and again, like, there's, it's always the same scene, you know, like, the, the girl hugs the dude from behind, it shows the girl's, like, boobs touching the dude's back, and he, like, just does that weird, like, I don't know, like, I, I'm... I just got a boner face. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was trying to put it in blush. Best, better words. Is that but... <laughs> blushing? Uh, Is that yeah, what you mean? Yeah, pretty much, but more like more erotic. <laughs> oh my god, Dan! But besides that, then there's the usual like, if a girl approaches a dude and like the dude is trying to help her with something or whatever, there is a fifty percent chance that he's gonna fall over for some stupid reason. And then he's gonna exactly fall over it with his hand over her boot. That happens all the time as well. Uh, I think it even happens in like the Monogatari series all the time, right? Well, That's in the, the Monogatari series, they had a scene I don't with think Hanukawa. it's an accident. <laughs> yeah, in that in that case, it's not as much of an accident. That's a good point. Well, hell, he fucking walks around behind. Uh, God, oh, the dead girl, yeah. right? Like the. <laughs> uh, just fucking about, literally, um, literally holding her skirt up as far as he can hold yeah. it. Like fucking really, dude. <sighs> I like that character, but no one else does. Oh, yeah, she she's great. And I then do like also, like in anime, that's pretty much a rule. Like two girls cannot be on the same bathroom together without <laughs> touching or talking about each other's boobs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. That's uh, kind of a real thing, though. <laughs> I've heard I've heard from girls that. A lot of girls do that. It's not like something everyone does, but mm-hmm. like, talking about boobs is more more common than you probably expect. Yeah. To girls, but anime is just make it like so, like you know, like in a way that's. I don't so know. I guess I, guess, I guess the best way to do it, I guess to put it into words a little bit for you, Dan, to help you out with uh, with English a little bit is uh, you, you don't like the the over fascination with boobs and stuff like that, right? Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I just feel like they they just use that too often to the point where I, I just grow tired of it. You know, like uh, maybe in the first time the first time I saw it I didn't think about it as much as like a cliche stroke. I was just like, Oh, okay, this is cool that I expected or whatever but it's it's just happened so much now and I've watched so many shows that do it that I grow tired of it. Well, yeah, with cliches and tropes, it's not something you'll know the first time you see it. It's when you see it five thousand exactly. times it's like, Okay, we've seen this, moving on. Yeah, pretty much. So you got any... I could go into... What's that? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I could go into other things as well, such as, like, but I, mean, I, I don't want to, like, make this too long, but, you know, like, Syscon is annoying. Uh, being fan service, I've seen it a few times, and please, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get that kiss that kiss in there, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tentacles, we already know about that. Yeah. And the fact that usually it's expected that the girl has to confess to the guy, like it's very, very rare to see a romantic anime where the guy actually takes the first step. Well, that that actually kind of leads into the one I have here for the one that I hate the most, which is um, like the thing I absolutely cannot stand is the the generic spineless main character, especially of like harems and stuff like that. Like he's it actually goes right. into pretty much it goes into a little bit of what you were talking about with like the like boobs and everything how they freak out over all kinds of stuff but it's fucking like it's 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 like everything like they they don't ever have the balls enough to actually ask out a girl half the time and they they freak out with any anything potentially sexual happens they don't know what to do they like fucking run away and scream and everything like that it's like it i i can see where they're coming from with that stuff but it it doesn't really, I I don't know. 
they they overuse it way too much and that type of character is just not enjoyable for me to watch that's why i love the the main character of omegami ss because he's like fuck it i'm gonna ask you out let's fucking do this like he he actually right. grows some balls and shit and it's fucking awesome he's still realistic to the point where like he still gets nervous and he still thinks a lot about when she do certain things and when not she do certain things but for the most part, he's way, way better than the usual main protagonist. Yeah, he, he's not fucking spineless. He'll actually do some stuff. Like, okay, there are certain situations, like, whenever you're you're in a fucking uh, hot spring with a girl and you find out she doesn't have clothes on and she jumps on you and everything with her fucking towel coming off. Yeah, it's okay to get a little nervous at that point, but, like, he handled it pretty well instead of, like, the usual yeah. spineless main character. They'll just get up and run away into the woods or something. It's like, fucking really? <laughs> You like this girl, she likes you, she's fucking hot, she just jumped on you with, like, nothing on, you're you're not gonna run away in that situation and freak the fuck out. You'll be a little bit nervous, but, like, I don't know. That's, that's, just, a, that's just a type of character I can't stand anymore. Same thing with, like, the oblivious main character, too, where he just can't tell if, like, whenever girls are hitting on him like crazy and everything... To the point right. where it's way too much. Because, I mean, I'm pretty oblivious to stuff like that half the time, but never to the point that a fucking anime main character is like that. Like, ah, oh, so bad. Has it ever happened to you when, like, you were oblivious at the time, and then six months later, you look back, and in hindsight, you're like, oh, shit, yes, that I can, girl liked me. I can think of three <laughs> specific instances in high school that happened, two of which Dude, I would have went after. Yeah, that happened to me a lot. Because two of them were... One, incredibly fun. Like, I fucking loved hanging out with them. And two, both of those two were incredibly hot, too. It was more, at that point, I thought they were, like, out of my league or something like that. But then I looked back yep. on it, and one of them I actually talked to, not, like, a couple of years ago. And she was like, yeah, I liked you. I kind of wanted us to date. It's like, thanks for telling me now. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. No, I've been through that as well. Like... Yeah, but still, I don't nothing... want to get into much details, but yeah, yeah, still though, nothing like as bad as the the main characters you see that happen with an anime, though. Nothing near that yeah. bad because these girls are just fucking like fawning over these guys, and they have no idea. And someone tells them, "Was like that chick fucking likes you?" He's like, "No, there's there's no way she would like me and everything." It's like she just like sat on your lap and ate a banana. Like <laughs> I've seen I, I, that's just something I thought of, but like I've seen stuff that bad where the dude's just like. I don't think she likes me after like fucking literally sitting on your lap eating a banana. It's like she, she just pretty much told you and everyone in like that can see her that she wants your dick. So how do you not <laughs> like know? She, she just cooked like rice and beef and a lot of bunch of stuff at home and brought you for lunch for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Like that's stuff like that, that where they just have no idea. It's just like. I want to stab you right now. Because usually that's the point where there's like six girls all doing shit like this. And he just doesn't know. It's like, how can you not know? <laughs> so never watch Infinite Stratos then. <laughs> I tried to it. and I had to stop. It's so bad. Yeah. Oh, it pisses me off too. He is very oblivious. <sighs> I, I could I could stand it the first few times I watched it like animes like that like it I, I didn't really enjoy them too much but I could they they I I hadn't seen the trope enough where it was driving me crazy yet but the more I watch stuff like that the more I'm just like no I this guy does not exist in the real world unless he has like an IQ of twenty <laughs> like that just doesn't exist man especially not to that extent Ugh. yep I don't know. Anyway, I've got a couple other ones here we can we can talk about a little bit too because I kind of want to get your guys' opinions on this too. Is uh sure another one that I I've kind of it, it was funny for the first like a lot of them that happened and everything first few animes I watched that happened because like the first few animes I really watched a lot of were harem animes and stuff and um I mean occasionally these can still be good if they're done right and it's the the super dramatic misunderstandings where it's like. One of them that's the most cliche one, I think, is the one that you mentioned, Dan, where he falls over and, like, the boob lands on the hand, or the hand lands on the boob right. and all that. That one I don't like. That one's fucking terrible. But, um, and most of them are now, because, like, the reaction is, like, they don't, they don't give the guy a chance to really react and say, like, hey, I'm sorry, I fell down, I, that wasn't my fault, or this guy pushed me into you, I, I'm sorry, you should blame him. They just fucking go off and, like, beat the shit out of the dude or something. 
Yeah. And you can see them coming, too. It's it's so bad. Like I said, there are some good ones, though, that work out well, that are funny as hell when they happen. And, like, what what do you guys think of those? Like, I, I've gotten sick of them by now. I mean, like, just the ah. fact that, like, the dude doesn't have time to explain anything? Well, just, like, them, them freaking out super bad or just doing, like, the stupid misunderstandings like that. Right. Yeah, I mean, I hate shows when, like, it's so easy to clarify the misunderstanding, and yet nobody clarifies it. Yeah. Because a lot of times, the kind of the opposite thing happens where the the character who has been misunderstood has a lot of time to explain himself, and as long as he uses the right words, he could probably do it and make sure everybody understands what actually happened, but he just does it. You know, like, he just goes, uh, uh, eh, yeah, uh, well, uh, sorry, or whatever. And nothing gets explained. Uh, yeah. That annoys the hell out of me. Like, what What do you think, Clecker? I think you're going to say something there. I mean, I haven't seen much anime, so some of the stuff, like, I don't know. Some of the stuff, I can get tired of some of the stuff, but I haven't seen as many harems as you, probably. So I'm not as tired of it, probably, as you are. Yeah. But I I can see where that gets really old really quickly. Yeah, there there's just certain ones you see all the time, like... Like I said, the the one that's probably the most prevalent that I've seen is the falling on top of the girl and like grabbing the boob and stuff. Like, yep. There, there's no reason to have that fucking scene happen so many times. Like, ah, uh, so bad. Like, what, what do you what do you think of it, Roberto? I'm on board with this CJ. I don't really like it either. All right. It's kind of been overdone, overplayed. Okay, I can't think of any. I mean, any instances off the top of my head, but there are some that are actually still pretty good. It's the ones that they, they that are very unique. That's why I probably can't think of them off the top of my head. Like certain ones just haven't done well. Anyway, um, I guess the last thing I have here on my list it was the one that's kind of pushed back a little bit, but it's one that does bother me a lot. And that's the fucking like dramatic nose bleeding that happens when they see boobs <laughs> and stuff. It's like that doesn't happen. That's great. <laughs> but, I, can't believe CJ, I actually like that one. That's in your favorite series. So? I still don't like that trope and that cliche that happens all the fucking time. Like, I don't know. It's it's weird. I actually it's, really like that one, though. It's pretty funny to me, still. Yeah, I think it depends. Like, I think some anime know how to do it. Other kind of exaggerate a little too much. Yeah, I, I guess it does depend on on the exaggeration of it. Like, that that can actually affect it. And how they... I, I guess this is one of the ones that really depends on how they do it in general. I don't know. I think what, what makes, like, a good joke is when there's a scene where you not actually necessarily expect the character to be horny about it or whatever. Oh, And then they just yeah. put the nosebleed in there to indicate that he is. Yeah. So that they can make, like, really good jokes with that. That, that can actually be pretty funny. So I, I guess I can see that as more of a storytelling or comedy tool in that aspect, but... Right. Just like, oh, there's boobs. Now I have a fountain of blood in my nose. It's like, yep. That's I've seen that plenty of times, and I've seen it combined with ones like falling over on top of the girl grabbing the boob and then fountain of blood. <laughs> like I've seen that scene so many goddamn times. It's not even funny. Like, oh. is there an actual like scientific reason behind it? Like, does it make sense to have a no. nosebleed in a situation it like can. that? Like, I actually have problems with nosebleeds myself. I've never had it because of that reason, but both me and my dad have, um, can at certain times have high blood pressure and stuff, which right. can cause, um, if, if the, the blood vessels in your nose are much more towards the surface or weaker, they can actually burst. Like, it, it just happens sometimes. Like, whenever I'm out for a run or something, sometimes it'll just happen. I'll just get a nosebleed out of nowhere or something like that. So I can see if someone gets that excited over it. It could potentially cause that, but it, not the fountain of blood type of thing. I could see that causing right, a nosebleed, right. though. Just no word. Like, it, it would still probably have to be something kind of extreme, right? Yeah, it'd have to be extreme, and it would be nowhere near the amount of characters that you see it done with an anime, unless right. everyone in Japan has extremely high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> not really. They have some of the healthiest people. Yeah. I'm sure there's some sort of origin for why they do that, other than not wanting to draw erections. <laughs> uh, yep. I, I was about to say, I think I read at one point that that was one of the main reasons, like, avoiding, like, they wanted to represent a character having an erection or being, like, just being overly excited about, like, a sexual yeah. thing, but it, it, 
wanted to appeal to kids still, so. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be one of those things, like in J- like how we say, you know, if you masturbate too much, you're going to go blind or something. Uh, <laughs> Some old Japanese saying. Oh, like an urban legend type of thing or something yeah. like that, yeah. All right. Well, I think we've kind of kind of petered out here, so I'll go ahead and start wrapping things up, unless anybody else has any comments or concerns or anything, I guess. Why did I say concerns? Oh. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe I am concerned. You don't know. Yep. <laughs> what are you concerned about, Roberto? Nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm concerned that nobody will ever listen to this podcast. <laughs> hey, we've had some people listen. Okay. We actually have more people than I expected already, which is kind of funny. I expected like cool. three tops, but yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and... How many people we have, what, like 50? We have that what? many like total views, <laughs> but that's not different <laughs> viewers. Yeah, Darn. no, that doesn't... Yeah. And that's just views on the website. They might not have even listened to it. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Um... So yeah, uh, what we're going to be talking about next week, um, we're going to be uh, starting like today or tomorrow, we're going to be watching Bakuman, which is we're going to be watching episodes 1 through 12 of that, and um, I think it was Roberto that recommended it, right? I did. Correct. Oh wait, no, no. Dan did. That's why. Dan? Yeah. Okay, Dan, give yep. us give us a quick little description of it. Nothing that'll what? spoil stuff too much I haven't for us. prepared. <laughs> well, like, if, if you had like Give me okay, like no, a 10 second elevator pitch thing for it. All right. So basically, Bakuman is a story of two middle school uh, students. One of them is really good at drawing stuff, and the other one is really good at writing stories. And on the first episode, they get together and decide to become manga authors. And you basically follow their story from middle school out towards, like, I think by the last season, they're like 26 or something. So, and you see, like, all their uh, trajectory over becoming like who they want to be or not you know there there's a lot of uh they have a lot of challenges along the way and there's also kind of a romantic story in the middle as well but i don't want to spoil too much but it's really good i really like it perfect couldn't couldn't have really done too much of a better job there dan even if you've prepared yeah all right Thanks. so yeah we're gonna be watching episodes one through twelve of that for next week and talking about that um I am not prepared with this, so I don't know what our random topic is for next week, so that, that'll that be a surprise. There we go, yeah. We'll just have that as a surprise. And, um, yeah. And we'll be doing the usual stuff, talking about our usual, like, what we've been watching or reading throughout the week as well, so, yeah, tune in for that. Um, so, yeah, you can find, um, uh, you can find the, the podcast on, um, uh, iTunes, so you can just search for Pseudo Random Podcast, it should pop up fine. Uh, you can find us on pseudorandompodcast.wordpress.com and um, I think it's pseudo underscore pod on Twitter, right, Dan? Yeah. That's yeah, it. and you can, you can uh, follow that so you can get any updates with us if stuff's going to be late or anything like that or if we want to just throw out random stuff, let you know when stuff's up and everything. And um, yeah, you can find me anywhere pretty much on the internet is Boom Coffee. That's my Twitter, my anime list, and variety of other things um boom coffee steam as well if you want to game with me which i don't know maybe but um <laughs> yeah where, where can we find you at dan i'm at lima daniel M on twitter that's the only twitter account that you ever need to follow you're gonna know everything about the world and the universe in there it says that's the uh, never mind <laughs> moving on <laughs> roberto go ahead rjr2992 all right and clicker Oh, you can follow me on Oclecker at Twitter, or you can look at me online via Boclex, which is B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S. All right. Didn't even have to tell you how to spell it this time. Cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week for Baka 1 episodes 1 through 12. So, yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>